Hey everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel M Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial, we're going to paint this hyper-realistic beach sunset painting. So a really easy tutorial today, we're going to use the following colours. They are titanium white, catch yellow, matte orange, rose pink, a little bit of crimson, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, iris purple, burnt umber and matte black. Now I have painted or stained a canvas burnt sienna and I've used chalk for some of the sunlight areas here. We're going to have a sunset just off into the distance and then I've used cobalt blue to put in the shadows. So I've used cobalt blue to put in some dark clouds here at the top of the painting that are going to wisp away and also some big prominent waves coming towards a beach. So if you would like to pause the video and copy down the outline, feel free to do so. And all I've done, as I say, is I've used cobalt blue just for the shadows and I've used chalk just for where I'm going to have the highlights. The reason I use chalk is you can paint over it and it doesn't leave any marks. And the great thing is, is if we're going to use pastel colours such as yellow and things just around this sun area, we don't want dark colours like blue showing up underneath. So the first thing we're going to do to block in our painting is we're just going to put a big splotch of white paint for our sun. So that's going to be our focal point, so that's going to be our low setting sun. And then we're going to mix Naples yellow. To make Naples yellow, all you do is add lots and lots of white to some CAD yellow, and you can add a dot of brown or a dot of black, whatever you choose to, just a tiny pinprick. And we get this lovely sort of buttery yellow called Naples yellow. And all we're going to do is we're just going to create a glow effect around our sun. So if you just imagine the sun as a super bright light, it's almost white, and as the sky gets a bit darker around it, it creates this sort of glow. So we're using a really nice pastel yellow all around to the left and the right of that sun. And all we're going to do is just going to block in our background sky first, and then we're going to put in things like the clouds and all the detail over the top. So first we're going to work on our colours and our transitions in our sky. And then we're going to do all the detail over the top. So to the left and to the right, the sky as it gets cooler, as it gets away from that sunlight, is going to get a little bit darker. So what we're going to do to emphasise that is we're going to sort of make a colour that just emphasise a little bit of coolness. Now purple is a really good trick to go from yellow to blue without your colors turning green. So if you take a little bit of purple, I'm using a cool purple, which is called iris purple, which is basically purple with a little bit of cobalt blue, if you haven't got it at home. And all I'm doing, just to make a cool purple, I've just got purple and a tiny bit of blue, and I've just added lots and lots of white to it. And all we're doing is just making a mixture of that creamy yellow, adding a little bit of purple and white, and a dot of orange. And you should get this sort of beige color. And what this color does, it just sort of cheats the eye, and it stops your colors mixing from yellow to blue, and you get a horrible green. You never see a green sunset, you never see a green sky. So by just using a little bit of purple, it's this little trick artists know. It just stops you from getting a green painting. So all we're doing, look, we're just blocking it in. We're not really worried about any shading or anything. If I zoom in for you. So I've left gaps in the underpainting because I want some... Um, of the clouds to show up, so I'm just leaving gaps, that's why there's some areas of um, burnt sienna shining through. And I'm going to take some purple and white, so lots of purple and white, I'm just going to load up my brush, I'm just going to make this area nice and pastel. So if you imagine this area of the sky is going to be getting quite a lot of sunlight, before it turns to a darker shade of blue. It's still getting lots of sunlight from that from that blaring sun. So we're just using a nice pastel purple and white, sort of a lavender colour, just to sort of bridge the gap. So 
so don't worry if your work's streaky or you can see some of the burnt sienna we'll go over all this we're just trying to gauge the colors it's always good to just sort of work out your paint recipes gauge where you things need to be and just block in the painting and when you're happy with it you can go over the top and neaten everything up so we've got this nice glow so now we're going to take some cerulean blue and some cobalt blue and mix them together to create a royal blue and we're going to have plenty of white to that mix a little bit more cerulean blue so we want it a bit more turquoisey there we go it's a really really pastel and all we're going to do is we're just going to create this nice light blue this nice pastel blue and we're just going to blend it in gently to that purple so if you can use a big brush because you'll find it really easy to cover a lot of space and don't be afraid to put a lot of paint on your brush I just wet my brush so it's just a little bit damp but I use more paint than anything and if you have like me look you've got lots of the burnt sienna shining through don't worry we'll give it a second coat to make it look more professional but the great thing about the cobalt blue being that it's a nice really dark shadow color is it shines through so you can see when using pastel colors where you want to put your clouds back in so we're going to make a darker shade we're going to use cerulean blue cobalt blue and purple now we're going to add a little bit of purple still plenty of white but we're going to make a darker shade that's got a little bit of cobalt blue a bit more cobalt blue than cerulean blue and a bit of purple just to make it nice and cool and look it's just a little bit darker and we're just going to frame the corners of our painting now the reason we frame the corners of our painting is again that's how nature works as in from the light source this area is going to be the darkest because obviously this is furthest from the light but also it just naturally gives your painting a nice solid dark frame and by having a nice solid dark frame it gets the viewer to look down the middle of your painting so just by making your corners a little bit darker it just frames your artwork it's an easy trick you can do it with anything so there we go I'm holding on to the canvas for dear life here because if I put the um, the clip down it goes right in front of half the painting so unfortunately I've got to sort of hold it get covered in paint but hey ho so there we go sort of works <laughs> right so she's all blocked in so we're going to dry her with a hairdryer and now we know the colors we're going to work on them more professional because she looks a bit terrible and that's fine that's that's the normal stage in a painting so we're going to get our titanium white we're going to put in our sun make her nice and vibrant and then we're going to get our cad yellow and white and a dot of brown and make our naples yellow and we're going to create that really bright glow now and as you can see, just by adding a second coat of paint in acrylics really makes a massive difference. It really makes your um, highlights more vibrant. I don't know what it is with acrylics, they've, because they're water-based. They're not like oils where they're super vibrant first time. Sometimes you just have to give them a second coat of paint so that paint is nice and thick if you really want to emphasize brightness and vibrancy. So if you really want to emphasize things like your highlights, especially things like the sun, it's worth just going over them twice. I know it's a bit repetitive, but this is what I keep saying to people in all the tutorials. This is the difference between being good at something and being great at something by just having discipline and doing something till you get what you want. So we're going to add that purple and white a little bit of yellow and a dot of orange and we're going to make that beige color either side but now because we're doing it properly we're going to work on our transitions and we're going to blend look we're going to create x shapes with our brush watch like an x shape and we're going to blend 
that yellow into the beige. So the transition is seamless. So you don't notice the jump between the beige color and the yellow in the middle. I want that transition absolutely seamless. So it just looks like it's melting off into the darker shade. So I'm happy with the bottom bit. So that's all blocked in lovely. And all our transitions are looking pretty. And now we're going to get some of the purple and white to create that lavender color. I'm going to create that glow just above this low cloud here. So this area that I've just left in the burnt sienna, that's where I'm going to have a cloud. If you're thinking, what's that big orange mark across the page? So now we've got this nice glow in the sky. So can you see how much more brighter it is? Just adding a second layer of paint. So we just want to make a nice bright glow here. That looks fab. We can even have a little bit of it coming in here. We'll blend all this in a minute. And then we're going to mix our pastel blue. So we've got that purple and white as a buffer between the yellow and the blue. So that purple and white is this great buffer. So we've got our cerulean blue and cobalt blue and white mix, plenty of white. And that buffer stops it from turning green. So now look when we mix this light blue, we come down into that purple, it won't turn green. And again, look, we're just working on our transitions. We're just gently mixing the two colors together. But I just want to cover up as much as the canvas as I can. So she's looking so much brighter just from the second layer of paint. But it's great, you can still see the clouds coming through. It's a really easy hack to use the cobalt blue in your outlines. Because then when you paint over areas, you can go, ah, oh, I can still see it and I can just block it back in. And then as we move up, we want to get darker. I've got a pre-mixed version, but all it is is cobalt blue, cerulean blue, a little bit of purple and white. So now we're adding purple and a little bit more cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is a little bit darker than cerulean blue. It's a little bit cooler. So by just adding more of the cobalt blue and a little bit of purple, you're just making a darker shade. Still got plenty of white. And then we're just making it a bit cooler at the top of the painting, just to frame her. So I'm going to swap to a bigger brush, because otherwise it would take forever. Gonna load up my brush. Here we go, much quicker. So that's what I'm saying, try to use a big brush. It really, really does help. You can cover a lot more surface just by using a big brush. And it makes actually blending a lot easier as well. Because the brush is so big, you can get plenty of paint on it. And it's so much easier to just sort of ease up on the pressure as you come down and you can sort of blend it into the previous colors. So it's actually a lot easier. So 
a multi-pack of brushes that has all different shapes and sizes. Try to get one with these sort of, I use these big, big ones and they're so much easier. So we're just creating our X shapes as we come down. And we're just blending it into the lighter shade of blue. So always the sky takes the longest because if you think it's the the transitions, the underpainting by creating this blending is quite hard work. But once you do it and you nail it, then when we add all the detail like the clouds and the highlights and shadows over the top, that is the thing that tricks the eyes. The same with the ocean, the underpainting takes the longest. So I know it's hard to keep watching and to learn this to do it, but the more you practice it, the easier it gets. And then once you've worked on your blending and we do all these detail over the top, that becomes super easy. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a dry brush. I've dried the canvas. I'm going to wipe away most of the paint and I've got some of the purple and white. And I'm just going to really put hardly any pressure. I'm just going to blend a little bit of that light, that sort of light pastel purple up into the pastel blue. So I'm just trying to create sort of a glow effect and I'm just trying to make the transitions look a lot softer. So by drying your work, getting a nice dry brush and your brush is really, really um, soft touch. So like a blender brush or a big brush and just put hardly any paint on it. Just wipe away most of the paint. You can look, you can just sort of glaze areas. Look, just wipe off most of the paint and just really soften up areas just so the transitions just like we did before look really realistic super smooth and super lovely so there we go we've got this lovely background sky that is totally perfect now so now when we start adding all the detail on top all these transitions with our darkened corners will trick the viewers eyes and create the realism. So now all the hard bit is done. So we're gonna get some bright cad yellow and we're gonna get some orange and we're gonna mix them together to create a really vibrant peach color. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna create some heat around the sun on the clouds. So this vibrant peach color is gonna be all the areas of the clouds they're getting super vibrant, lots of sunlight, and they're sort of exploding in color and heat. And they're creating this really bright area of our painting. And again, it's a focal point for the viewer to look at. So we're gonna match that in the sky and the clouds above the sun. So I'm gonna load up my brush. So I was just changing brush. I realized I had a tiny bit of blue on my brush there. So just giving it a clean. So all we wanna do, we wanna emphasize the heat around the sun. So these clouds are gonna be really vibrant and yellow to emphasize sort of the heat around the sun and to match that glow in the background sky with the Naples yellow. And we can even have some small ones that are sort of breaking away here around our sun. So this area of right in the center is getting the most heat. So it's gonna be the brightest. And then either side of it, sorry it's a bit off camera, we're gonna make the clouds a little bit darker. So we're gonna add orange and pink together and then we're gonna add a little bit of brown and a little bit of purple. Now, orange and pink obviously make a bright color. So we're using purple and a little bit of brown to make a more crimsony version. 
So purple and brown, and we can even add a dot of black, just a dot of black, just a, I've got a gray here, just to make it a bit darker. And we should have a nice sort of pastel, sort of crimsony color here. So the purple and the brown, adding to orange and pink, will make a lovely sort of crimson, not quite a burgundy, but sort of a nice warm still colour. And just like the background sky, where we've had the glow in the middle and then the beige either side, we kind of want to match that with the clouds. We kind of want to make the clouds darker either side of the centre. And we're just, while it's wet, look, we're just gradually blending so the transitions look nice and smooth. Look, just gradually blending the two tones together. Just again to make it look more realistic using colour. So look, either side of that sunlight, these clouds are going to get harsher and darker. And these colours will trick your eye and create the realism. So this could be sort of a low setting cloud just right on the horizon, why not? And we'll do the same the other side just to block her in. There we go. And then we could have some low forming clouds here. Same on this side, and we'll just join it up in the middle, just easing up on the pressure, just so it blends. And the same this side, just so it all matches. How fantastic is that? So I'm going to get some of the highlight colour that we just made, which was yellow and orange. So catch yellow and the matte orange together to make the peach colour. And just above the sun, I'm going to create a really bright cloud. So I'm going to have a big cloud as a focal point. I'm going to have its bum, its base, really, really bright. So if you imagine the bottom of this cloud is getting all the sunlight hitting from underneath. So I'm going to make a really, really bright big cloud right here in the middle. So you can all have something to focus on. And then I'm going to get some more of it and just have some little breakaway bits. So these are all the clouds really getting sunlight directly having the sunlight come from underneath. Some more here, why not? And then we've got the darker shade, I think we'll use to go around it. So let's get this really blocked in. That looks fab. And then we'll get the darker shade, which was just by adding look brown and purple to orange and pink. So orange and pink, a little bit of brown, a little bit of purple just to make it darker. So purple massively cools the colour. So I'm just going to add a little bit more purple than the previous one because I want to make it a little bit less warm because we're getting a bit higher up in the sky. So there we go, it's just a shade darker, not too much. And then either side of the light, I'm just going to blend it in just like we did previously. And I'm just going to sort of outline it and this is all the area of the cloud that's getting a harsh shadow that's not getting as much sunlight and again look, we're just blending it just really gently while it's, it's wet and we'll create some clouds so we have some breaking off over here why not some this side So can you see the colour's still got some orange and, and pink in it, so even though it's got plenty of purple and brown, 
it's still sort of a tan colour, it's still quite warm, it's like a crimsony colour. So it's trying to emphasise the heat, but as we move up into the painting, just like our background sky got a lot cooler in the blues, we're going to get a lot cooler. So we're going to have much more purple and much more brown now, a little bit of black and then a little bit of cobalt blue to make her look really cool. So purple, brown, black, and a little bit of cobalt blue. And these clouds, we've got still some of that cobalt blue underpainting shining through, so I can see where they are. I'm just gonna repaint my clouds back in. So all I'm doing, I'm using a darker shade now, going up into the painting, and I'm just repainting those clouds. I know exactly where they were. So by using the more purple, darker shade for the clouds, it should look like a natural transition in the sky where these clouds are a lot more harsh and they're getting less sunlight, so they're a lot darker and cooler in their color. So again, that creates the realism. So all I'm doing, look, I'm just creating shapes with my brush. I'm having some sort of break away. As I said many times in the tutorials, just push down really hard to get really harsh clouds and then just ease up on your brush if you want to get sort of wispy sort of areas of the clouds just to make them look more marshmallowy. So push really, really hard to get big blocks of color and then just really ease up on your brush and you can sort of make the edges really sort of wispy and not as harsh. But you just want to create shapes. So look at that, that looks fantastic. So everything is blocked in and everything is looking really, really nice. But we just want to work on the detail, just like we did with the um, transitions in the background sky. We want to neaten this area up because it still looks not as professional as we would like. So all we're going to do, look, we're just going to rework areas. So we're just going to get some of the darker shade first. Some of that harsh, more purpley blue shadow colour. And I'm just going to go around the edge of this cloud just to make the edges a little bit harsher. So I'm just making these areas. These are all the areas that aren't getting as much sunlight. even either side because they're more in the shade from that sun so if you do it on the left just do the same on the right so again it just gets you to focus down the middle so just blending it so I'm wiping most of the paint off my brush I'm just glazing areas just with this darker purplier shade. Just so it just all the transitions look pretty. The same here on the right. And then I'm just going to mix some of the warm crimson sort of colour, which was orange and pink, purple and brown. It's orange, pink, purple and brown. I'm going to get a dry brush, wipe away most of the paint. And look, I'm just going to shade this area. Just again, so the transition looks really seamless. It's not as harsh. Just think of your eyes as the best camera in the world. So if you have things that look out of shape or not natural, it picks up on it really, really quick. So all you want to do is just make things like your transitions really, really pretty, really, really soft. And as I say, there's no detail, it's just the colors. But it tricks these the eyes and just makes it look more realistic. It creates the realism. So look at that. Taking two secs, just shading over area. I 
That looks much nicer. Right, so we've got this lovely glow. And we're going to swap over to a fine liner. We're going to get some brown. So some burnt umber and cobalt blue. So brown, cobalt blue. A little bit of crimson and a little bit of purple. But predominantly brown and cobalt blue. But a tiny bit of crimson and a tiny bit of purple. And we're going to make a really harsh shadow colour now. And now we've got a thinner brush. We're just going to go around the edges and create some sharp, harsh edges. And also create sort of little flecks of clouds, sort of little breakaway parts to create some harsh sort of um, shadows. So again, it's just to create some of the realism. We're just creating some harsh edges. Some of them you can actually color in. Look, we can just go over the top. But these are all the clouds that are more in the shade or areas of clouds that aren't getting as much sunlight. So look, all we're doing, we're just creating little shapes and creating little areas of the cloud that are a lot darker. So you don't have to cover up all of them. Some I'm going to leave and leave some of the lighter shades. And what it does, it just creates a nice sort of composition, sort of a nice polarity between the the, uh, the darks and the, the warm colours. So again, just having these mixtures between sort of the harsh shadows and the softer, warmer colours, it just sort of creates a nice mixture, creates the realism. But as I say, acrylics always dry darker. So remember that, don't go too dark, don't use predominantly black because it will create almost a silhouette and it will bring it forward. So that's why we use blues and browns rather than all black. Because blue and brown together creates a very dark colour which is not quite black and it doesn't bring it as far forward. So we still want these clouds nice and pushed back into the distance to create the realism. So look, all I'm doing, I'm just shading certain areas. And again, if you use the correct brush, so I'm just using a really sharp uh, nibs brush. It's just a really thin brush. It's so much easier to do smaller clouds with a small brush. So as I say, like um, a lot of painting is just knowing your tools. So if you want to do fine detail, just use a really sharp brush. It's almost like having a really thin pencil. It's just so much easier to do little dots and sharp areas and outline areas. So we've got this fantastic transition now in our clouds. We've created the realism. We've got this lovely glow in our sun. So now we're going to start adding some highlights. So we're going to start creating some light effect. So we're going to make a really luminous yellow. So we're going to take predominantly white and just add a tiny bit of cad yellow, just a tiny bit, just so it's off white. And we're going to create a really, really luminous sort of yellow. So all I'm going to do first, I'm just going to outline my sun and then I'm going to start outlining my clouds. So again, if you use a smaller brush, it's much easier to just outline areas of the clouds. So what we're trying to do is create these really sharp highlights. So these are all the part of the clouds that sort of get this electric sort of bright light because the, the sun is so harsh creates this lovely outline and what's really good about it look you can poke holes look in the sky so you can sh change the shape of your clouds if you choose to or have sort of bellowing lights shining through so by just using this color it's fantastic for again tricking the eye and creating the illusion of detail So all I'm doing, I'm just outlining the clouds. So again, it's so easy. You just get a thin brush and just go around 
the clouds. And you can even have look, little ones, just like we did with the darker colours. You can just create shapes. And these can just be some clouds that are just absolutely engulfed in sunlight. And they just create little shapes. It's so easy when you know how. So we've got this lovely glow. And now all our transitions, now they're getting outlined. They look like it's all glowing in the sun. So this bottom bit would be getting lots of sunlight. And just like before, as I say, when you're laying the paint and this paint is wet like now, it looks so vibrant. And then sometimes an hour later it's dry and it looks nothing like this and it looks a bit rubbish and a bit naff. Just go over the top in the same colour. Just, just go over the outlines again and they'll look just as vibrant. So just like we did with the background sky, if your acrylic painting dries a little bit flat and a bit boring, just dry it with a hairdryer and just reapply over the top with the highlights. And the paint will stick to the previous paint and it will dry really vibrant and look so much more professional. So let's outline this bad boy. And I find doing this super relaxing. So I hope you find the videos relaxing. I find painting really centers me and just chills me out. So I can happily spend hours just outlining clouds, relaxing. So as I say, you can change the shape of them. You can add holes, it's totally up to you. Just take your time. Let's add some holes. So now that glow is really starting to take effect. You see how it's starting to trick the eyes. All around that sun is looking so vibrant now. As I say, you can just outline some, you can add little breakaway parts using this super electric colour. Look at this. So now we've got this focal point, we can do the same on the ones going up into the distance. So all the sort of base of these clouds, these harsher clouds, they would be getting some harsh sunlight from underneath. And what you can do is, look, you can have little breakaway ones that are just really shining in the sun to create these really harsh, bright clouds. So look, going around the bottom of them, you can create a really really bright edge and then you can have some look that are just shimmering in the sun 
So let's go around the edge and have some breaking away. So this area would all have its bum, sort of its base, getting really harsh sunlight. So let's do a few up here. Same premise, same technique. If the sun's coming from underneath, all the bottom side of the cloud would be getting really harsh highlights. So look, all around the bum, all its base, look at that. Give it a really bright highlight. And then have some breaking away, just so it doesn't look so symmetrical. So what you're doing, you're creating really, really nice, harsh light. And again, with that nice blended background, and all the transitions matching, and all the colors matching in our clouds, it's really starting to trick your eyes. It's so nice for me to do one of my proper paintings in real time and show you guys all how to do it. Because as I say, once you know how, it's so easy. So some of these, why not? Let's do some highlights over here. Look at that, it's looking so realistic already. Well, we're in 42 minutes in, 41 minutes in. So you can paint this at home in 42 minutes. Not bad, eh? So we're gonna mix some of the orange and yellow. So do you remember the color we used um, for the glow around our sun? And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the same trick. I'm just gonna poke some holes here in these clouds. I'm using that really bright yellow just to create the glow. And then what you can do is you can use it as not as harsh an outline. So all it is is orange and yellow and some of the areas to the right and to the left, they're getting lots of sunlight, but not as harsh as that really, really bright white and yellow. So again, it's just a little trick going right. Well, either side of the sun is still going to be bright, but it's not as bright. So we're going to use still a nice warm highlight, but not as harsh. So just use that color, but it's the same technique, the base look, bottom area, this area would be getting the sunlight. Same over here. So if we do it on the left, we've got to do it on the right. It's always got to match, it looks symmetrical. And you can still do the outline trick. So these clouds would still be getting a glow around their outlines. And if you have to, as I said previously, if you have to go around some of your highlights, just take the time to do that. Now what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna glaze this area, just in the yellow and white. I'm just gonna make it a little bit brighter. So what I'm doing, I'm using a dry brush, barely any paint, and I'm just creating a little bit of a glow just around my sun, just to emphasize the heat. So it's a little trick got barely any paint on my brush it's almost like powder it's like if you're applying makeup to your face if you're a lady so that's all I'm doing I'm just creating that lovely little glow it's a really good trick if you want to sort of emphasize light on an area so I'm super happy with our background sky so now we're gonna work on our waves and we're gonna create a ocean beach so we're gonna block in our um, ocean now so I'm going to swap back to a big brush 
and I'm going to use the blue that we used at the top of the painting. So it was uh, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, a little bit of purple and plenty of white. So cerulean blue, cobalt blue, a little bit of purple and plenty of white. And all we're going to do is we're just going to block in around our big wave here in the middle. And we're just going to go right up to those clouds. Now, for some reason today, I was spot on and my horizon was nice and straight. My easel is always a bit wonky. It's an old easel and she's quite haggard and wonky, but she's my pride and joy and I've used her for years. So I don't want to chuck her out. So you're not imagining it. My, my videos are always a little bit crooked, but I love her. So I'm not getting rid of her. And um, but my horizon was bang on straight today. So normally I would use tape to measure a perfectly straight horizon. If you have an issue with your horizon, you can always once you've blocked it in, you can always go back and measure your horizon. And use a bit of tape just to straighten her up. But we were spot on today. We didn't need to. So what we're going to do, we're just going to use this nice blue, this pastel blue all the way down here to this wave here coming into the shore and we're going to leave the middle with this sort of barrel bit which is going to be our big chunky wave now don't worry if you have some burnt sienna shining through unlike the background sky we're not going to give it two coats of paint because it can kind of look like the heat from the sun shining through but what we are going to do we're going to take some burnt umber some dark brown which is going to use plenty of paint and we're just going to darken up our left hand corner so we always darken up our left hand corner because that's where we're going to sign it so we want a nice dark color in the, the left hand corner a to frame our corners but b because when we sign our work we want a dark color for it to be against so you can see your signature and you can get credit for your painting so i'm just using burnt umber as a really dark shadow color just to sort of frame the painting and this could sort of be the area in the shade sort of the area of the sand which isn't getting as much sunlight and then we're going to swap to a flat headed brush and the reason I always use the flat headed brush for waves is they're just really, really easy to do um, paint straight lines. So we're going to mix some cobalt blue and some burnt umber together. So cobalt blue and burnt umber, a little bit of purple. And we're going to load up the sharp edge of our flat brush. And then it, look, it's so much easier when you're using the edge of the brush to create straight lines. So if you have a shaky hand, or you're just a bit nervous using again the right brush it makes it so much easier for you at home it just makes your life so much easier if you know um, that the brush can create straight lines so what we're trying to do first we're going to block in the shadow of our wave so this is the nice sort of barrel of the water as it sort of rises up towards the shore and because we've got that lovely cover of blue, we're literally just colouring it in. It's so easy. So underneath, that's going to be creating a shadow because obviously the wave is bellowing down. And then over here where the water is nice and thick, it's going to create a dark shadow. And this wave has kind of got its back to the sun. So that nice straight edge. There we go sort of bellowing down here to create that sort of barrel shape so just load up your brush get as much paint as you can on it and then look you can sort of create the sort of straight lines to create sort of the caps of the water so look by using the really sharp edge of the water of the water of the brush excuse me it's really really easy to create waves so look all I'm doing look and you can do the opposite as well. Look, you can go across with the brush and you can shade areas. If you want to make areas darker, you can load up your brush and just come across. So have the sharp edge upright 
and then just come across sideways and look it just shades this area so I want to again make this corner nice and dark to frame the painting so look I'm just shading an area using that brush and just like the clouds the more um, you push down the harsher the line you'll create so the more I push down look really really hard I will get a really sharp edge so and the more I ease up I'll get a very wispy sort of almost chalky sort of revenue to do so if I want to make really sharp edges I just really push down against my canvas and the knife edge of the brush will create a really harsh edge and if I just want to sort of imply detail and just have some sort of wispy sort of lines I just ease up so look if I want to push down really hard I get a really harsh wave so this one here could be a big one in the background that's sort of building up. And then if I ease up as it fades away, it sort of just leaves a little chalky residue. So just by pushing down really hard, you can get some really harsh waves. But the ones in the background, if you want them sort of fading off into the distance, just have hardly any paint on your brush and just really just tap the canvas gently and it'll just leave a tiny chalky impression and it's perfect for implying waves that are sort of fading away so the brush does all the work basically it's absolutely perfect for waves and our sunset over the ocean is taking shape so let's have a harsh one by pushing down and then these ones in the distance. To create far away waves, you just want to almost have completely um, horizontal lines. So all you do is don't have any really harsh ones in the distance. Just have just tiny bit of pressure. Don't push down very hard. Just have little f horizontal lines in the background. And it would just look like some caps of waves fading away. So look how realistic that is starting to look. So we're going to get a big brush that's totally dry. We're going to wipe away all the paint. We're going to get some cobalt blue and brown. And we're just going to glaze the corners just to make it again a bit darker. Just so it looks like they're in the shade. And again it just frames the painting. So all these little steps, it's like building a house, you just do each step one at a time. And if at the beginning I told there was going to be say 50 steps, you would go, oh my god, that's so daunting. But if you just follow them along one at a time, once you put them all together, it all comes together and it's so easy. And stepping away from your work is taking a step back. And looking at it with fresh eyes where you can see where you need to highlight areas or darken up areas it's really really good practice when you're painting landscapes so you can always see me getting up getting out of my chair taking a step back seeing where I need to work on areas so look all I'm doing I'm just going over the top with some brown and blue I'm just really making sure this corner is nice and dark And as I say, if your background painting is dry, you don't have to worry if you make a mistake. If you made it too dark and you didn't like it, you can just get a baby wipe and you can just wipe over the top. So if you're ever worried about times in your painting, dry your work first before doing, say, this glazing. And if you don't like it, you can just wipe it away with a baby wipe. So I'm liking that. That is cool. And I'm going to do the same in the corners of my sky. So this is all dry. My canvas is totally dry. So you can experiment. So look, let's do this corner here. And we'll see if we like it or we don't like it. You won't know till you try. So let's have a go. And kind of works, kind of doesn't. So, but the bottom right doesn't work the top right excuse me 
So as I say, take a step back when you're painting. Look, you can get a baby wipe. You can just wipe it all away. So if you're thinking of doing any areas where you want to sort of change areas, just dry your work, look. And if you don't like it, or you did it a bit too harsh, you can just use a baby wipe and wipe it away. Okay, so now we've got this wonderful wave put in. We're gonna get some purple and um, cerulean blue and cobalt blue and white. And we're going to put some foam in for our sea. So we've got cerulean blue, cobalt blue, tiny bit of purple and a bit of white. So the same color as the ocean. And we're just gonna mix a nice pastel blue. And we're just gonna create little sort of circles and create sort of the foam of the wave as it sort of smashes into the beach. So what I'm doing, I've got a little brush I'm just sort of splodging it in and I'm just trying to create sort of circular shapes and just sort of outlining the edges and this is all the sort of foam as it smashes into the beach so I'm just blocking this bottom bit here And then we could have a bit more foam, I think, here on the right. This could sort of be the area of the wave that's sort of churning up. So all I'm doing, I'm just creating little circles. Just to create sort of the wispiness of all the sea foam. So there we go. Now the reason we're using purple blues with our white is because this area is still in the shade. We don't, even though foam is normally white, we don't want it too white. We don't want it too bright. We want it still cool and in the shade. And then we're going to have some areas of the water that is getting a bit of sunlight. And it's casting a shimmer. And while using our flat brush, we can do our lovely straight lines just underneath this would sort of be the reflection of that foam on the water. So if you think water's like a mirror, the foam would be reflecting onto the surface. So if you think of it looking in the mirror, whatever you see you get. So because that foam is shining down, it would sort of cast a reflection. So all we're doing, we're just using that same color to emphasize that. And again, because we've got our nice darkened edges, it just centers it and makes it look more real. Now to create the sort of tube barrel effect of a wave, what you can do is get the same light color of cerulean blue, cobalt blue and purple and white. And you can get a fine liner and you can kind of create curves to your wave. So all I do, look, watch, I just create sort of a curved shape that the wave is curling round. And all I'm doing, I'm just using this highlighted color on the top of the wave and also sometimes on the bottom here, just so it sort of looks like it's joining up. And that just tries again to trick the eyes to give it sort of a curvature. So if you think of waves as being really feminine and Everything to do with water is curvaceous. There's, you don't really get any straight lines. So all we're doing, look, we're just trying to create sort of curvature. We're just creating nice soft edges and highlights. You can have some splodges of water and it just creates that sort of barrel shape. Just so the wave isn't so straight and harsh. That's fab. So I'm really happy with the wave and I'm really, really happy with our background sky. So I'm going to get some yellow now, some cad yellow and some orange. I'm going to make that peach color again. I'm going to load up my flat brush and we're going to come straight down from the sun and create some shimmer on the water. So if you imagine that the sun is coming straight down that sunlight 
So we're going to try to follow it straight down. We're going to try to sort of follow the shapes of the waves we've created. So if we've created the waves going sideways, we're going to sort of go sideways. So I'm just stepping back just to check it that I'm going correctly straight. And then we're going to come down here where the water is a lot more flat as it's really, really shallow. And we're going to come into the sand. And on the sand, it's going to really sort of pick up that sunlight. So what we're trying to do, we're just trying to match the sunlight on all the different surfaces. So as I say, it's much easier if you just take a step back and sort of see if you're going straight. Sometimes when you're painting, it looks straight and then you take a step back and it's totally wonky. So I'm just going to load up my brush. And I'm just going to create some straight lines coming straight down. I'm trying to be as even as I can. So if I go one way, look, I'm going to try to go the other way. I don't want to be all leaning to the right or leaning to the left. I'm trying to stay balanced. And then this one's sort of diagonally, wasn't it? And then we come down. And all it is, it's just to try to create shimmer. It's just to try to create where the light is coming down. And then into this area of sand. And then we're just going to get bright cad yellow. Go load up the edge of the brush and do the exact same trick. So right down the center. And we're just using that really harsh edge of the brush just to create the illusion of sharp highlights on the ocean waves so again look we're just creating sharp lines shimmering in the water and the sand there we go so now we've got our highlights pretty much done on our light we're gonna match it just like we did with the outlines we're going to match it in the water. So we're going to get, um, like we did with the clouds, excuse me. So we're going to get purple, white, and a tiny bit of yellow. So purple, white, and a tiny bit of yellow to make a really pastel sort of beige color that we made previously, do you remember? And all we're going to do, I'm just going to create some circle shapes. I'm just going to put some highlights just here on this part of the wave because this area is where that shimmer is. So again, it's in the center. It gives you something to look at. But what it is, is it just matches with the light. So this area is getting where the sun is shining down on it. So just by creating a little bit of a highlight, either side of the darker blue, it just creates a focal point. So again, it's purple, a little bit of yellow, and some white. We don't want it pure white because that would be overbearing. And then what we're going to do, we're going to use that same color and just swap into a fine liner to create the sort of foamy edge of the water. So when you have the water come up to the beach, you get all sort of bubbles and you get that sort of lovely foamy carpet. So we're using our purple, white and yellow for the middle. And then we're going to swap back to our ocean color which was cerulean blue cobalt blue purple and white so do you remember this color that we've used for the sky and for the ocean and we're going to use that nice cool pastel blue either side of it so just like we've done with the wave and just like we've done with the clouds we've got cooler either side of the middle and again, that will trick the eye and create the realism. So we've got this nice foamy edge. We get all the bubbles. And then all we're going to do, we're going to start creating zigzags that join up to that edge. So I've got a very thin brush and I'm just creating zigzag shapes, little splats. And some are joining up to the edge, some aren't. And this is going to be all the shallow sea foam. 
So now we've got that really dark corners. Now we're adding this cool blue over the top. It looks like all this sea foam is in the shade. So again, all the colors match. So we've done this side. That looks fab. That looks really cool. And then we can load up a brush. We can have some here. Don't want to go too close to the middle because obviously that area is going to be a bit more in the sunlight. So we'll be here. We'll just join this area up. Just so it all matches. And then we'll do the right hand side. So I'm leaving the middle free because the middle is going to be more in the sun. So I don't want to use the cool blue in the middle. Because just like the wave, I want to add a highlight. So all I'm doing, look, I'm just creating little zigzag shapes. Some joining up to the nice frothy edge. So it joins some of them up to the edge. But some here on this right hand corner, I'm just going to leave really wispy. I'm not going to push down very hard because I want to leave this corner nice and dark. Just to frame the painting. So I'll have some coming up, but I'm going to leave this area predominantly dark. There we go. And then in the middle here, I'm going to get some bright yellow and I'm going to create some yellow zigzags first. So this is all the sort of shimmer in the water. It's the same trick, just with the colors to create the light. So we've done this yellow first, and then some of the yellow and orange, that really bright peach color either side. So if you do it on the left, do it on the right as well. Oops, got a big chunk of paint there. So we've done it one side, let's do it on the other side, so it's all nice and symmetrical. And then we're going to get some of the purple and white and yellow. And we're just, just like before, just going to do some zigzags here, but with the highlight color. And we're just going to make them really subtle. And it just looks like this area again is shimmering in the sunlight. I don't want too many because I want to really emphasize the heat of the sun with the yellow. But I'm just putting some of these really subtly over the top. Just so all the transitions match. And then I'm just going to get some black. Well, I was going to get some black, but my black ran out. <laughs> so some black, blue and brown. So we're going to mix black, blue and brown together. And we're just going to create a harsher shadow. We're going to use a fine liner. I'm just going to outline our water here. So we saved our black right to the last minute because, and we're still adding blue and brown to it. We don't want it to be just pure black because we always save our darkest to the nearest foreground. So if you imagine this area is the closest to the viewer so we keep our really harsh shadows for this area. And then it brings it forward, you see. So we, so this area is really close to the viewer. It's almost like you're standing on this water. You're standing on the beach. So that's why we don't use the, the really darks till we need them. And we're just going to use them just to outline the bottom here. Because this area is going to be getting no sunlight because obviously it's underneath a wave. And we can use a little bit just on the edges just to give it a sharper edge. So just like we did with the clouds, do you remember we used the really darks to give some of the edges a little bit more oomph and give them a little bit more sharpness. You can do the same with your wave, but don't, don't use it too much. It's just from areas that you think are getting no sunlight so underneath here look this area 
would be just literally all in darkness. As that wave bellows down on top, so this area is going to be really dark. And we can give some of these edges just a little bit of shade. Just to make it look more realistic. Still doing the curves, still doing the curves. And then now we've got that dark color, we're just gonna put some harsh lines here in the foreground. And we'll just make some of these waves a bit darker, just so they stick out a bit more. So this one could be a bit darker, give you something to focus on. So just all these finishing touches, just to make her look more realistic. So there we go, we should have some big waves in the background. And then while we've got the colour, look, we can even put some divots in our sand. So we can add some of that black, blue and brown, just to add some texture to our sand. So if you wanted to add some pebbles or some texture, you can have some coming under the water here, look. Just make your sand look more 3D. And then last but not least, I'm just going to get a little bit of cad yellow. And I'm just going to glaze this area under the sun just to make it more glowing. So same technique. I've got a dry canvas. And I just get a dry brush. I wipe away most of the paint. And I'm just shading an area just to give it a glow from the sunlight. It's a really easy technique. It's just like we did with the corners. If you don't like it, you can use a baby wipe. Because all your painting's dry, you won't take away the underpainting. So it's just to emphasize the heat around that sun. So I'm just gonna have some on this cloud. Just in the middle here. Maybe put some holes. And just go over my highlights a little bit more. You can tell most artists are perfectionists, which is not a bad thing. Being obsessive is not a bad thing. I hear a lot of people say that's a bad thing. It really isn't. Because if you're never happy, you never stop learning. So with me, I always want to get better and better and better and better. So I never ever stop pushing. So if you always keep working and keep working, trying to get better and better at your artwork, it's not a bad thing. So I'm just poking a little bit of holes in some of these clouds, just trying to get a bit of the realism. Some of them are a bit too wonky, so I'm just gonna get some of the paint, which is the purple and white, and I'm just gonna poke some holes in the skies, just so the clouds aren't all joined together as much. And then I'm just going to do the same trick. So we're going to get the black, blue, and brown. And we're just going to create some harsh clouds. So again, just like we did with a wave, just in the top edges, we're just going to make some of these really, really harsh now. Just in the corners just to frame her. And just like before with the highlights, 
because they've dried, they're not necessarily as dried as dark enough. By just going over them a second time, you can make areas darker. So same trick works for making things brighter. Same things make works for making things harsher and darker. If you want to emphasize some of your shadows, just go over them twice once they're dry. But she is starting to look super realistic. And then to finish her off, please dry your painting before you attempt this, is to create sunbeams. Now if you dry your painting and you don't like this, you can just wipe it away. So please dry your painting, make sure you have dried it, because look, you could just get a baby wipe and wipe it away. But the sunbeam, all I have done is I've mixed a little bit of white and a tiny dot of yellow. I've got a completely dry canvas and a completely dry brush. My brush is completely dry. I wipe away 90% of the paint. And then all I'm doing is just creating straight lines coming out from the sun to emphasize sunbeams. But as I say, if, if you dry your work and you make a mistake, you won't smear all the dark shadows that we just did or any of your highlights. So make sure you dry your painting first before attempting this. Because sometimes, what if you watch, I'm going to show you, sometimes they go wonky. Look. So if your work is dry and you do the step back thing where you do a sunbeam and you think, oh, that looks all right. And then you step back and you think, ah, actually, that looks pretty naff. That looks pretty rubbish. Look, you can just wipe it away with a baby wipe. Look at that. So please dry your work before attempting this because I would hate for you to get all the way to this stage and then ruin your painting by accident. So look, all we're doing, we're using a dry brush. We've got hardly any paint, just a chalky little bit of paint. And we're just creating really soft, really wispy sunbeams. So you can even smudge it like a professional like me with your fingers. <laughs> So let it just come out from the center. Wipe away 90% of the paint. So you've just got this chalky residue and just glaze the painting. Look, just glaze it. And that creates the realism. You can even leave gaps in between the clouds if you want to. So it looks like the sun is sort of peeking through. But it's just to create the glow and again create the realism. And just like the highlights, if you really go over them once or twice, you can really emphasize them. So it's totally up to you how much of a sunbeam you want to do. If you want them just subtle, or if you want them to be really striking and really, really bright. So I always use my fingers sort of to just blend them, just to take away some of the harshness of them. Let's say, look, if you just go over the top, that will make them brighter. So let's take a step back, see if I like it. Does that look realistic? Mm. <laughs> so that's what I say, take your time. If they're too harsh, you can just rub out areas. And look, you can even sort of soften up the light on some of the clouds. So you can sort of glaze the bottom of this cloud to make it look like the sun is sort of caressing it so you can do so much that's what I keep saying to you is just know your tools know your brushes know how light works experiment and don't be afraid to make mistakes it's the only way you're going to learn and have plenty of baby wipes <laughs> so there we go I'm going to glaze this area just to make sure the sun's sort of kissing these clouds. I think she's pretty much done. So I've signed her in the bottom left hand corner. So you've learned how to do a background sky, how to darken your corners, how to create a gradient and a change of light with the yellow for the glow of the sun and the purple and white so you don't get a green sky 
with your nice darkened skies, how to put clouds on top and how to use darker colours to create the shade and lighter colours to create the glow of the sun. You've learned how to outline them and create highlights and how to create dark shadows, how to paint a wave that looks super realistic, how to create a sunset over the ocean, how to have shimmer on the water and on your sand and then how to darken up your corners so you focus towards the middle with this beautiful realistic curvy ocean waves so i hope you've liked this super realistic painting one of my actual original paintings i've really enjoyed painting real time along with you guys at home please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already we have plenty of landscape ch um, tutorials here on my channel my name is murray so happy painting don't forget to tag me with your versions at m Paintings, and take care guys bye